A few years ago I made a video about British late war vehicle markings. It's still worth a look if you haven't seen it. Link in the description below. With the Flames of War British Bulge release coming up for late war, I thought it was time to do a quick update, including how the British Bulge book can help you get the markings right. Join me for a refresher course on late war British tank and vehicle markings. British markings are complex and changed throughout the war. The information I'm about to cover is for late war markings, 1944 and 1945. Not all divisions or units followed the rules, and some sources give different interpretations, so please take this with a grain of salt. It's a guide, not a Bible. It's also brief and will simplify some details for the sake of brevity. To start with, let's check out the basic tank markings you'd expect to find. Allied vehicles shared the Allied Star. This was not a US marking. It was a shared marking used by the British, Canadians and French as well. British tanks usually had an arm of service mark, a divisional badge or formation sign, bridge class number and individual war department number. Often vehicles also had tax signs that indicated their squadron and sometimes even numbers that indicated the vehicle's position within the troop or squadron. Let's talk about the divisional formation sign. Each division has a distinctive emblematic badge painted on their vehicles. This Sherman is from the Guards Armoured Division. Their divisional formation sign is the ever-open eye of Horus, a white eye on a blue background with a red border. The 11th Armoured Division had a stylized black bull on a yellow field, and the 7th Armoured Division had the red jaboa of their Desert Rats heritage. Each division had their own specific marking. These are usually painted on the front and rear of the hull or fender. We can stick with this picture to talk about the Arm of Service flashes. Arm of Service markings are numbers in a coloured field. This number indicates the regiment or battalion within a division, while the coloured background denotes the arm of service of the unit. Armour, infantry, royal artillery, engineers and so on. These were also usually displayed on the front and rear hull or fender. A red 51 on this Sherman indicates it belongs to the senior armoured regiment in an armoured brigade. In 1944, the structure of many British armoured brigades was a brigade HQ, three armoured regiments and a motor battalion. Brigade HQ vehicles would be marked with a red 50, while the vehicles of the brigade's middle regiment would have 52 and the junior regiment 53. Despite being infantry units, motor battalion vehicles would be marked with a red 54. So along with the divisional sign, the red 51 arm of service marking here makes this tank part of the 2nd Armoured Battalion of the Grenadier Guards, the senior tank regiment of the 5th Guards Armoured Brigade of the Guards Armoured Division. Other colours indicate other arms of service, like green for infantry, blue for engineering, red over blue for artillery, and green over cobalt blue for recce amongst others. Another very common British vehicle marking is the bridge class number. Bridge class markings are roughly equivalent to the vehicle's weight in tonnes, and are represented by a black number on a yellow circle on the hull front. Bailey bridges and other engineering structures had weight limits, and the bridge class number was used to make sure crossing vehicles didn't exceed those limits. Cromwell's are rated 27, Sherman's 30, Sherman Firefly 33, and the bridge class number on this Churchill is 40. Tanks and other vehicles often had tactical markings which indicated their squadron. This is the marking with the most variation between units, so everything I say here is general, and specific units may have done it wildly differently, if at all. HQ vehicles had a diamond tack sign, while A squadron had a triangle, B squadron a square, and C squadron vehicles had a circle. Each armoured regiment's tack signs were different colours, red for the senior regiment, yellow for the second regiment, blue for the junior regiment, and green for the motor battalion. Armoured recce vehicles and armoured car tack signs were usually white. Placement of these markings varied wildly, but they generally appear on the hull sides or turret, and sometimes included numbers identifying the individual vehicle. Tack signs were mainly used on armoured vehicles of tank regiments, motor battalions, armoured car regiments and recce regiments, while SP anti-tank or artillery almost never used them. Lastly, there's War Department census numbers. 
These are unique letter and number codes to identify an individual vehicle in the British Army's infantry. Tracked vehicles like tanks and universal carriers carried census codes starting with T, while trucks and half-tracks started with Z, armoured cars F, and SP artillery S. Are you still with me? This is just a quick overview. There's more detail in my 2015 video, so check that out if you want a deeper dive. But what I wanted to do was show you how Battlefront's latest book for Bulge British helps you mark your tanks and vehicles correctly. Check out this page showing the structure of 11th Armoured Division in the book. It shows the division structure, and the constituent regiments of 29th Armoured Brigade and 159th Brigade. You will notice that 23rd Hussars shows you the arm of service flash of Red 51. It's the senior tank regiment of 29th Armoured Brigade. It also has a red square. That tells you the correct colour for tack signs. 3rd Royal Tank Regiment is the second regiment in the brigade, so it gets red 52 for arm of service and yellow tack signs. The junior regiment is the second Fife and Forfar Yeomanry, shown cross-attached to 159th Brigade here, with the red 53 arm of service and blue tack signs. Battlefront have done a great job of helping you out here, and you can see there are markings for other units in the division. Royal Horse Artillery Sextons will have a red over blue 74 arm of service mark. There's no tack signs here because artillery vehicles generally didn't use them. They had a very different and complex system. Vehicles for the Toad Artillery Regiment carry a 76 red on blue Royal Artillery Flash, while vehicles of the 75th Anti-Tank Regiment get 77. 15th, 19th King's Royal Hussars are an armoured reconnaissance regiment, so they get the green over cobalt blue 45 arm of service mark. It's not shown here, but their tack signs would be white. This would be the same for the armoured cars of the Inns of Court Regiment, who get the green over blue 44 arm of service mark. The infantry get green flashes with 61, 62 and 63, depending on regiment seniority. The independent 2nd Machine Gun Company have the black machine gun service flash with 64. Battlefront have included these marking guides right in the 11th Armoured Division structure diagram on page 21 of the book. They've done the same for the 7th Armoured Division on page 34, Guards Armoured Division on page 43, and 4th Canadian Armoured Division on page 49. This information will let you make the most of BR946, Battlefront's late war British decal set. This set has two different decal sheets, and you get two of each sheet in the set. There are a number of division badges, as well as arm of service flashes for tanks, armoured cars and SP guns. The division badges include 11th Armoured, 7th Armoured, Guards Armoured and the 4th Canadian Armoured Division. There's also a small number of the triangular bull's head marking for the 79th Armoured Division. The 79th was a specialist division which operated vehicles like the Churchill Avery, D.D. Sherman, Crab Mine Flails, Churchill Crocodile Flamethrowers and other specialist armour for D-Day and beyond. Commanded by General Percy Hobart, these were known as Hobart's Funnies. The sheet also has plenty of allied stars, a mix of star in a circle marks for upper surfaces for air recognition and plain white stars for hull sides. Again, the use of these was variable. Some tanks and vehicles had no stars, some had plenty. There are a number of red 51, 52, 53 and 54 arm of service flashes. 20 of each all up. These are for tanks and vehicles of an armoured division's three tank regiments and motor battalion. There's also red over blue 74 for SP artillery, 76 for towed artillery and 77 for anti-tank guns. The anti-tank markings were generally used on SP guns like the M10 and on towing vehicles for towed AT guns but not on the towed guns themselves. The green over blue 44 flashes are for recce armoured cars, while the 45 is for tanks like Cromwell Challenger and Firefly in armoured reconnaissance regiments, like the 15th 19th King's Royal Hussars in 11th Armoured. I think the other flashes here are for independent tank brigades, but I don't know which ones. I think there's some information on these on Battlefront's website. There are bridge class numbers. Interestingly, there are 5s for Universal Carriers, 27s for Cromwells and 40 for Churchills. I assume the 15s are for armoured cars. But there's no 30s for Shermans or 33s for Fireflies. An odd omission. You get an assortment of tack signs. These are not complete sets, rather selections for different regiments. 
there's some white A squadron triangles for armoured recce regiment tanks. The senior armoured regiment, the Red 51s, have some red triangles and squares for A squadron and B squadron. Red 52, the second regiment, has some squares for B squadron and circles for C squadron. Red 53, or the junior armoured regiment, has squares and circles for B and C squadron as well. There are no green tack signs for the motor battalion, but that's okay, they weren't always used. Lastly come the War Department census numbers. You get some T-series numbers for tracked vehicles like tanks and universal carriers. There's some Z-serials for trucks and half-tracks, and some S-serials for SP guns and artillery. The decal set is a mixed bag. Having all the different division badges means there's plenty you won't use, and you might have to get another set to get more of the ones you do need. However, this is the only way Battlefront could do it without having individual division decal sheets for each formation. That just wasn't going to be economical. If you know other players who are fielding a different division, maybe you can swap division marks with them. Similarly, the selection of tack signs is the same. There isn't room in the set to have full sets of each shape and colour. But it does mean if you absolutely have to do C Squadron of the Senior Armoured Regiment, you're out of luck. But the lack of 30 and 33 bridge class numbers is odd, given the numbers of Shermans and Fireflies British players will field. So the Battlefront decal sheet is good, just be aware of the limitations. Economically, it isn't feasible to do it to cover everything in one decal sheet, so this is as good as it can realistically be to mark up most of your wartime British. You just might need more than one set to get enough for all your vehicles. Anyway, that's a quick overview of British late war vehicle markings. Plus, we had a look at how you can use the Battlefront decal set to implement it. As I said, this information is general and brief, and I'm far from an expert. I might have gotten things wrong, and individual units might have done things differently than the official spec in practice. So if accuracy is important to you, do some research on the unit you're trying to represent and see what they did. And remember, this is a hobby. Feel free to ignore all of this and mark up your models in the way that makes you happy. But I hope this information has been at least a little bit useful. Remember, you can check out my 2015 British Markings video that goes into this in more detail. Link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.